Um, we have a fascination with most of us with what's up there. So I'm going to show you some things that are up there. The first, um, despite the fact that our natural inclination is about 15 degrees down. So this is the Capella Palatina in Palermo. Uh, small in stature, but exquisite in execution. A Byzantine period blend of Norman and Arabic styles. Well, okay then. The Rookery, Chicago. Burnham and Root, um, one of the first steel-framed uh, indoor uh, atria office buildings uh, in the loop in Chicago, renovated by Frank Lloyd Wright. That's, that's a distinction, I think, in 1905 but still one of the most pleasurable places in the United States. Uh, the Stockholm Public Library uh, by Gunnar Asplund, uh, one of Sweden's most notable architects. Um, this celestial body of knowledge, um, a completely open and free library um, encircled by books. Voskapoya, this is a small Albanian city in the southeastern portion of Albania, a whole series of medieval churches completely covered um, by the paintings of itinerant artists, um, um, beautifully salvaged and in the process of being restored, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Um, this you might recognize, it's a little closer, the Museum of Civilization uh, in Gatineau across the river from Ottawa in Canada. Um, this sits at the terminus of uh, uh, the Hall of Nations. Um, Bill Reed did a beautiful sculpture, um, the people of Haida Gwaii, that sits underneath that orb. Louis Kahn, uh, one of my teachers originally, uh, an architect um, who designed the Exeter Public Library. Again, uh, a wonderful metaphor for the accumulation and dispersal of knowledge. Um, the structure, the atria at the center, the books encircling that atria, and then taking the books uh, to the perimeter, to the light. Uh, probably one of the most fabulous theaters in the United States, uh, the Auditorium Building by Adler and Sullivan, uh, built in the late 1800s. One of the first real mixed-use buildings succeeded or came after the Great Chicago Fire in the late 1880s. Um, this is one of the most beautiful theaters in this nation. Um, Hagia Sophia in Istanbul, um, uh, originally a Christian Greek Orthodox uh, church for probably close to 900 years, uh, then a Muslim uh, mosque, uh, and both religions saw fit to revere and enhance this structure. Um, the Lone Star State. Uh, this is ab absolutely one of the most beautiful state capitals that I've visited. Uh, spectacular dome. Uh, larger, as the Texans likes to, uh, like to say, than the U.S. Uh, capital in Washington. Uh, beautifully illuminated, naturally lit. Um, this is Giacomo Serpata. Um, some of the oratoria that he did in Palermo, three or four prominent ones. Um, an absolute gush of um, uh, plaster sculpture that completely envelops rooms in ways that um, it, it's a riot of, of art that uh, Leslie would enjoy. Um, this great catenary uh, roof sculpture that uh, uh, was done by Aero Saarinen in the early 60s. Uh, this is the Dulles Airport Terminal Building, the original. Um, it's been extruded some and uh, added to in other ways, but still one of the most uh, dynamic structural uh, places in the United States. This is the Passage in The Hague, the Netherlands. Uh, my father was a silversmith, and he had a small store in this um, indoor mall in the early 50s. Um, you know, really very much the precursor of, of how we tend to shop today, um, but this was very much a mixed-use place. You could live there, you could shop there, you could I uh, have an office there. Uh, of, of everything I'm going to show you, this is probably the most uh, beautiful and spectacular. This is uh, Francesco Bormini, uh, San Carlo della Quattro Fontana. It sits at the intersection of a street in Rome with fountains on each corner. It's a very small street. It, uh, he, was, he was a somewhat mad architect, um, and his great rival was uh, Giancarlo or Gian Lorenzo Bernini. 
who uh, uh, built this San Andrea El Quirinal, which is just down the street, probably 20 years later, a much more ordered um, and easily comprehensible space, um, but, but beautiful nonetheless. And back to Louis Kahn. This is probably um, a museum uh, that many say is without equal insofar as just how one brings natural light um, through the roof. Uh, there's a kind of incised uh, skylight that runs the length of these uh, vast barrel vaults. The entire building is comprised of these vaults. And then um, his contemporary today um, is Renzo Piano, one of the most prolific museum architects in the, in, in, in the world, uh, trying to do uh, con a little bit across the way. This, this building is completely separate, but technically um, probably one of the most proficient architects working today. Um, I love this space. This is uh, the, originally the patent building, up Robert, Robert Mills in, in Washington. Um, now the American, I always uh, get this wrong, but the Bill Lipke could correct me there, uh, the American Art Gallery, I think of the Smithsonian, and the enclosure of the original structure with this um, covered courtyard. It's, it's the outdoor living room of the museum, one of the most exquisite, I think, communal spaces in Washington. Um, Tiffany and Studios, um, the Marshall Field House, or the Marshall Field Stores in Chicago, 6,000 square feet of uh, glazed ceramic tile, um, absolutely iridescent. And then we once had a president who was also an architect. I think, uh, uh, I wonder how he could have done all those things at one time, but uh, this is the rotunda at the University of Virginia, still very much a model for um, academia and how we organize ourselves to learn. And uh, the rotunda was for a long time the university library. And this uh, humbling last slide is, uh, was built uh, over 2,000 years ago, the largest unreinforced uh, concrete span in the world by the Romans. This is the Pantheon. Uh, a lot of architects talk about uh, blending or blurring the line between the indoors and the outdoors. So this does it by having an open oculus at the ceiling. And uh, anyway, that's probably enough. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs>